It's good to see you this morning. So, all right. So for the last two classes, or for the last two classes coming up, uh, this one and the next one, we're going to to get into some solutions and dealing with depression. Uh, we're going to uh, try to stay as biblically based as we can, but we're also going to get into just some things that we can do as people in our daily lives to to help avoid stressful situations or deal with stress or, or deal with depression. In Psalm 15, verse 15, we are told to call out to God and He will rescue. You know, first, we need to believe that. We need to believe that if we call out to Him, that He will rescue us. And you know, what's, what's key in this is that there is an action that generates an action and response. you got to call out. And that's what we're going to talk about today as we go through. Uh, we need that we need to have action in our lives to make sure that we, we deal with the situations as they are presented to us. Now, Jazzy, does that look familiar? What? Oh, I oh that. Okay. four o'clock this morning I get up and I just scrolling through my phone and I see a post from Jazzy. And I'm like, that is awesome. I'm gonna put that in. So um, I want to share a couple pictures and I want you to notice the one on the left that says if you rearrange the letters in depression, you'll get I pressed on. Yeah. Your current situation is not your final destination. Thank you for posting that. Perfect timing. Yeah. And then the other one I saw this morning, uh, mornings are better when you talk to God first. Mm -hmm. And I think both of these are key and crucial because solutions require actions. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the thrust of what we're going to be talking about today as we get into so, some topics. Uh, we need to remember that we have to have action in our lives if we want to get a result. So, let's press on. Let's remember uh, that if we want results, we're going to have to act to fight depression and stress in our lives. So, we're first going to look at the stewardship of ourselves, primarily in this class today. Uh, we will touch on the stewardship with reference to the grooming of the body, the guarding of the soul, and uh, being guided by the Spirit. Uh, you must protect yourself against depression and or getting deeper in depression. And uh, we, we need to make sure that we realize that we have, have some control in this situation. we got to put it over to God as well as we might need a doctor's help. But we have a part in this that we need to, to make sure that we're doing. So can I get someone to please read both scriptures on the board? Please. For a while. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. 1 Timothy 4.8 For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Second? Yes, First Corinthians 6.19-20 Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. So one of the things I'd like for us to notice with regards to our topics, they're all addressed in these scriptures. Here we see value is put on our bodies, not above spiritual things, but value is placed on our bodies. Uh, godliness is talked about, which incorporates our soul, and it speaks of the Holy Spirit within us. And those are the three topics that we're going to discuss today. But I wanted to see that, that these are, are godly things that we need to, to protect in our lives. Uh, because they're important and they all have value. So, let's first start with grooming the body. And this is going to be the most kind of surface one. And so, we're going to jump into just some things that we can do. They might seem like no-brainers, but it, it's one of those things that if you're in it, sometimes you just might need someone to say, hey, have you done this? Or... Maybe you just need to reflect on yourself and go, maybe I should go do this. So first, schedule a thorough medical a checkup and, and talk to a doctor if you are feeling depression. So if it's something that you think it's a clinical thing, go to a doctor and talk to them. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's some things that we've talked about in the past with regards to chemical things in our body and hormones and, and thyroids and all these things that, that maybe we just don't understand. Go to a doctor. <coughs> Express the fact that you might have depression. Yes, ma'am. I don't know about all doctors, but most primary care doctors now have a form that every time you see them, yes. you have to fill out how since your last visit, 
Have you felt depressed? Do you lack sleep? You know, all the things that might be indicators. So they're looking for it too. Well, absolutely. Because it's so prevalent in our society. Absolutely. And if you can catch it early, I'm sure there's a higher success rate. I don't know what those numbers would be, but it only makes sense, right? Uh, ask your doctor to evaluate, evaluate the medications that maybe that you're taking because some of them might be causing the depression. They might be causing you to feel that way. And so if you are on medications, it's good to go and have your medications evaluated. Maintain a regular schedule. Oh, sorry. Develop regular sleep habits. We already talked about this last week, about six to nine hours. Sometimes it's hard to get six hours when you're busy, right? I mean, we've all been there. But, you know, it's one of those things that we need to have a regular um, sleep schedule where we're getting regular sleep because there's, there's chemicals that are, are produced in your body. It says that when you sleep, you produce serotonin, which alleviates depression, and people are more susceptible to depression whenever they're overly fatigued. So if you feel like you're just getting down and things are dark, make an assessment on your sleeping schedule. You know, make sure that you're getting the rest that you actually need. Uh, number four, uh, regular exercise. Make sure that you're taking time to, to be in tune with your body. A good example is, is maybe take 20 minutes a day, four times a week, and just go for a walk. And what can you do on that walk? Just talk with God. You want to talk about a double-edged sword right there that's good for you? You're, you're not only getting some exercise, but also you're having time to yourself where you can just talk with God. It, it's good for you on both fronts. Uh, we also talked about eating balanced and uh, uh, nutritious meals on a regular basis. Uh, this is tough in the day on fast food and, and Uber Eats and everything like that, but we discussed the, the value of vitamins and minerals that get into your body that help you uh, operate at your optimum, right? So take care of your body by putting good things in it and making sure that, that you do that on a regular basis. And then Number six, and I think this one is probably one of the ones that is probably the most powerful, taking time uh, for stress to be relieved. So taking walks, listening to music, journaling, uh, most importantly, praying and, and reading. Uh, I love the, the new goal that we have, reading the Bible daily, right? Chapter a day. So does that just kind of disconnect you from the word, world and allow you to get away from the stresses of the world and let you just get in tune with God more? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Has anyone already been seeing the value of that? We're only a week in. Absolutely. I'm seeing a lot of heads nod. Just having that focused time to get away from all the stressors of the world that are just, just weighing heavy on you and stressing your body out, to just focus truly on God in a spiritual way allows your body to, to, to kind of get out from underneath that stress. You know, easier, easier said than done, right? You know, over the last few decades that, that I've been on this earth, I've noticed that life gets more complex, life gets busier, life presents us with uh, more stressful decisions to make as you get older, uh, life deals you more harsh realities as you get older, older. Uh, more people you know might pass away, uh, you have more aches and pains, things aren't uh, where they used to be, all sorts of things, <laughs> all right? And that's stressful. It weighs on you. You want to be young and spry and 16 and be able to run as fast as you used to and think as quick as you used to and, and, and have less stress in your life and make decisions about, you know, the most important thing is, is wh wh where's the next five bucks going to come from my, my tank of gas just because I want to go on a date? That was the most stressful thing that I had when I was 16. Now it's like, ooh, house payment, car payment, you know, retirement. There's all these things that we all have to deal with as we get older and they just weigh on us. And it seems like as we get older, what do we do? We do just the opposite of these things. We avoid the doctors. I'm guilty. I don't even have a primary care physician. Shame on me, right? Okay, I got a lot of, most people who are older than me go on. <laughs> Jason, shame on you. I don't. I'm relatively healthy, so if it's not broke, don't fix it. Is that wise? No. Um, you know, we sleep less because we're so busy. We uh, uh, forego exercise, we eat fast food, we skip meals because we're so busy. Uh, we lose sight of that quiet time and that reflection. Uh, we don't go on walks or go hiking maybe as much as we, we used to because we got so many things going on in our lives. So my question for you is, is you guys are going to answer this. How do we get focused with regards to being good stewards over our body and making sure that we take care of these things? 
Discipline. Okay. Go. Discipline. Expound. You have to discipline your mind to discipline your body. Okay. So what's that look like? Well, I mean, the God teaches in His Word that uh, discipline will be found in His Word. I mean, it's it's understanding that um, if you're not consistent uh, with your practices or um, how you live your life, that you, you invite basically trouble into it and Absolutely. mistakes to happen. It's kind of like that resolution. Everyone has resolu resolutions at the beginning of the year, and then by February it's like, Ooh, well, that lasted long, right? you got to be disciplined. you got to be truly committed to it. Who else? We'll just go back in a row. You first. <laughs> Well, I would say in addition to what Zach just said, you do have to have discipline, but I think you also have, have to have reflection as well. Yes. Because you have to allow, you know, when you have those shortcomings. Mm -hmm. like my goal is normally to drink 13 ounces of water a day. So at the end of the day, I think about, or the next day, I think, but did I do it or not? Because that's not enough water. But I'm trying to be consistent with right. it. And so um, I, and I think, well, okay, well, I drank juice when I should have been drinking water. So then I have to make a correction. It's the little things sometimes. The little things in our lives that make us feel better. It's that 20 minute walk. Um, I think we need to like reprioritize. Um, like why are we so busy? Mm -hmm. Why is there no time for what's important? Right. I mean, I don't know. Like that's a choice. It is. Like, do you have to have, you know, three cars and do you have to have now you're getting like, a huge house? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you need all these things? Can right. you eliminate stuff? Right that's making you work, overwork, right. making you, I mean, what are the things that you value materialistically? What are you investing your money in? Absolutely. Um, and what can be eliminated? Like, do you need that? That's awesome. Asking that question. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think for some people like me who kind of struggle with that, maybe a checklist to of a certain extent. Write like, it down. a plan for like the week, because I have a calendar in my room. And I consistently write it for every single day about what I need to do for that day. Um, and then I have like some reminders on my phone that tell me I need to drink this, I need to do this, I need to read these Bible scriptures by this time, and I need to work on my schoolwork, I need to talk to my family. I have everything kind of prioritized for me because I am very disoriented in a lot of my own actions. So for me, a checklist has always been helpful. Wise, but beyond your age. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Really oh, I'm sorry. Did you have your hand? I just think we need to be very specific. If you're, if yes. you're broad in your ideas, it's very hard to be reflective and measure right. how you've done. So you have to be very specific. And I agree with writing it down. For me in my life, if it's written down, it exists, it's going to happen. If it's not, it's not. It's Absolutely. To. No. All wonderful. That's why I knew I wouldn't have to write anything down because you guys would answer that question. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. All right. Now let's fo focus on guarding the soul. So, stewardship of the soul involves the following. Our mind, our will, and our emotions. Those all wrapped up together is really what our soul is, and it absolutely needs to be guarded. Um, we're going to focus on how to guard that. We're going to start with the mind, first and foremost. So, research shows that the mind... Excuse me. Research shows that a person's mind is literally changed and the chemistry in it is literally changed by thoughts. And so it's interesting how what we think can literally change the chemistry of our mind. Doesn't that give us a lot of power? Absolutely it does. So with that, can I get someone to read Romans 12 and verse 2? Be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. What is good and acceptable and perfect? So what that translates into us is if we have control over what we think, and when we think it controls some of the chemicals in our mind, then what that tells me is, is when we fill our mind with God's Word, we become filled with His perspective and His promise, and that will have a positive impact on our lives because we're controlling our mind through our thoughts. Yes. When she read that verse, I also thought of Philippians 4.8. Where it's like, whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, dwell on these things. Absolutely. You know, there's a, there's a law of empty spaces, right? If you fill your mind with those things, is it hard for the other things to get into your mind? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So when we fill our, ourselves with, with God's, 
God's goodness and His will and what He wants us to do, not only does it apparently have a physical impact on us with regards to our chemical uh, chemicals in our brain, but it makes it hard for the other stuff to just get in. So, you all have a handout here. So, I always like it whenever there's something that can help us be a little bit better or maybe get on a path. So, who said, write it down? Well, we wrote it down here. Something that we can do, right? <laughs> so, the one that says, uh, let's see here, handout to class five on the upper right-hand corner. This is a quick example of some exercises that will help renew our minds and will help fill our minds with God's perspective. Now, of course, there's a hundred different ways in which you can approach this, right? But maybe you are struggling with having good thoughts in your mind. Maybe you're struggling with darkness. Maybe you're struggling with depression and stress. You know, I thought this was awesome. And just, we're not going to go over it all, but we'll just kind of touch on what it says. It says, uh, number one, write down several uh, scriptures on index cards and read them several times a day. And there's a, an example of some. So, we have phones nowadays that have a little notepad on it. Uh, index cards are kind of the way of the past, but if you have index cards, use them. If you got a phone, put notes in there. But how much will it impact our day if maybe we sit down three times a day or four times a day, we have several scriptures and we just sit down and we read them and we let God's perspective and will into our mind. How much will it change your day? It'll change it a lot, right? And how much, you know, have you ever noticed in the scriptures whenever um, God says something, he'll say it multiple times over and over, it just kind of drives the point home? It works for us as well. You know, whenever we hear something over and over and over, it really stresses the importance of it. What we're doing is we're telling our brain, hey, this is something that you need to believe. This is the thought process we need to have. This is true. This is accurate. This is God's will. And so if we take these scriptures and we just put them in our brain every day, are we pushing other stuff possibly out? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> this is one reason I like the Psalms so well, because David was depressed a lot of the time, but most of the time he would end the Psalm with praise to God. He knew where his strength <clears throat> came from, uh, and he knew where to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. What a great example. I mean, he more or less... Gave glory to God. He went over. I mean, in our last class, we talked about he he went down through all of his stressors and how he felt. But then he goes into how he gives it over to God, and God will will raise his countenance. We need to do the same thing in some type of format. If it worked for David, who had some serious stressors in his life, can it not work for us? Absolutely. And the second one: make a list of seven good things in your life. And spend time every day thanking God for those things. During the next week, add seven more. Now, it doesn't have to be seven specific, no. But, multiple people over multiple classes have talked about how it's therapeutic when they write things down. And I believe the teachers in the room will also say you learn or things connect better whenever you hear it, whenever you write it, and whenever you see it. Right? So with that being said... Connections are being made in your mind of how truly blessed you are and what you have to be thankful for. Once again, if you're pushing, putting those things in your mind and you're pushing them in, are you pushing other things out? It's all about activity, right? And that's, that's the goal that we're going to stress today. It, it, it takes action. You have to do your part because God will always be faithful to do His. You have to safeguard your mind. You know, one of the, the healthiest habits we can get into, and, it, and it's a hard one sometimes to get into, is to remember that every time when we begin to pray, start our prayers with thanking God. Mm -hmm. Don't don't start, we, we human side of us wants to dive into asking for stuff. Right. Dive in beginning by thanking Him and thanking Him for the answered prayers already. Right. You know, and like you said, sometimes it's hard. Seven things, really, it's not that hard. It's not. E even on our worst days, when we really stop in, in prayer and start to give and start with thanks, it's amazing. Right. You know, we think of the song, count your many blessings, name them one by one. It will amaze you what God has done. Absolutely. Think about the Word of God, the songs, these things that will help us each and every day. Prayer. I mean, there should be times in our lives that we're walking along and in a hardship something happened. A verse, a, a hymnal, something holy and godly should jump into our minds. Right. And so it, it takes time. Us forward to it. It's not just yeah. like magically, once again, we're talking about the magic pill. 
You're not just going to do this and all of a sudden, whoop, I feel great. Write it down. Absolutely. Absolutely. Deal. The other thing that we do that renews our mind is when we gather together to worship. Absolutely. And, and we focus our mind for a time on, on honoring Him and praising Him. That's a, that's a time that we come together to renew. It's Absolutely. It's, it's really good for us. But, you know, during the worship service, when we're all here sitting with brothers and sisters in Bible class and, and we're truly just focused on God, how often do we talk about just letting the cares of the world be left out at the door, right? Because truly, there's no better place you can be, right? Than sitting at the feet of God, giving Him the honor and glory that He deserves. Remembering God, who is deity, Jesus Christ, who gave His blood for you, showing your value. Does that put a good perspective in your mind? And so what happens so often is, we'll talk about this a little bit later on, people become withdrawn, and then they stop coming to services, and they, they, they pull back. And that's, that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. Searching God's Word can help us discover the purpose in painful loss as well, or why we're suffering. If we just go through life and we experience suffering, sometimes that will just, I mean, if we don't search of maybe why it's happening in our lives, and, and dig into God's Word and see the examples that are put there for us and how they turned in, in, into a way in which you can glorify God, we will never see that side of it and we'll only focus on that darkness. So, once again, in our minds, we can just focus on the darkness, but when we do these different activities, when we come to worship, we hear lessons, when we focus on scriptures, we can dig in and see why there is suffering and why we might be going through certain things. But also, we need to be patient to understand that sometimes we might not always get an answer to that. And we need to be patient with God on that. So, Romans 2 and 12 says, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And that's exactly what that's saying to us. We need to have hope in our God. We need to be patient in our affliction that either He will give us an answer or maybe we're not going to get an answer. But in the end, we have an eternal hope in Him. Maybe we will not be cured of cancer. But is this our end game here? This earth? No. Do we, will we know why we got cancer? Maybe not. But is this our end game? We need to have faith in Him and realize that He is faithful to us. If He says that He will raise us anew, we'll be raised anew. There will be no tears. We need to focus on that. And this is done by renewing our minds through Scripture and better, better understanding of God's perspective. Anybody have any, anything else on that? Jason, just real quickly, this really speaks to my mind, um, thinking about the mind. I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of like software, you know, it can be programmed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's up to us to, to program the mind. You know, That's a great analogy. If we don't program it, you know, the world will. <laughs> and, I mean, fact. unlike our bodies, which can show, you know, when we're inconsistent, you know, whether it's eating, dietary things, sleeping, you know, we, we begin to show signs of that over time. You know, our mind is, is, is also the same way. Right. You know, and whatever you're not consistent with in, in your mind, what you're thinking on, it'll, it'll manifest maybe not in an outward appearance, but you'll, you'll feel the effects of that. Absolutely. And in data processing, garbage in, garbage out, right? Yeah. So, if we're letting our, our minds be filled with a bunch of junk and we're letting all these viruses and things in to use a software term, is our mind going to be healthy? Well, no. Take it to something we all know, our phones. Yep. So what, what are we thinking about going through them from time to time and going, oh, I don't, that's junk, that's trash, I don't need it in my life. It's, right. it's a waste of space, I don't need these pictures. We have to do that with our spiritual life. So we do. Going through it and taking that you know, inventory, what are we putting into it? What are we leaving in it? Clean out the clutter. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's jump into the will. Uh, do you ever want to do something, but then that's about as far as you get? All right. Um, you know, we're, we've all done that, right? And that's frustrating to you and also to the people around you because they, they expected you to maybe follow through on something. Do you sometimes get what's called paralysis of the will? That's exactly what that is. That's where you want to, you know you need to do it, but you just don't have the will to follow through on it. People get this when they have prolonged pressure, and sometimes they start feeling this way. This is, I don't have my little heart here, I'm so sad. 
when that heart is under pressure for a long period of time, and sometimes they just lose the will to, to follow through on that action of what they need to do. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I, I thought it was coming. Um, well, I was just saying, sometimes you're just too old to have the energy. <laughs> oh, well, that, that, that's, that can happen sometimes. But, but it's one of those things that the will of being able to do the things that you can do versus the things that you physically just can't right. do, there is a separation between those things. Yeah. But that's when you lean on your brothers and sisters if exactly. it's a physical thing so we can help you out. And I do. <laughs> Good for you. I'm glad. You're only 90. <laughs> so life uh, comes at us with unavoidable changes, but God's presence and God's work can help us help guide us through those to the right choices to to avoid feeling that that needless discouragement. So if I could get someone to read uh, Psalm 73, 23 through 24. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will receive me to glory. There's two pieces of this. The obvious one in this scripture is that God will guide us with His counsel, which is His will, right? What's the second obvious piece of this that's action? Not a uh, not obvious piece, I'm, I'm sorry. But it's key. There's a glory waiting for us. There is, but... Allowing Him to guide you? Allowing Him to guide you. It says the right hand. Right? So... Sometimes do we just kind of hold our hands down and I got this, I don't need any help? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes are we the person with our hand up? You hold my right hand. What if I don't extend my right hand? He can't hold it. What if I keep it in tight to myself and say, I got this. Lord, I don't need you. Is that my will? Is that me thinking I can take care of things? Or is that me going, God, your will be done? Well, I mean, there, there's many times, think about it with children, and that's us, and this is the relationship when you think of our, ourselves, we are the children of God, and God right. being our Father, that, that how often do we grab for our children's hands, or our children have our hand, and holding our hand willingly, but not allowing us to guide them. How often are we like that with God, that we're, we're holding His hand, we want, but we're not really holding it. We're, we're not allowing that guidance, that we can hold His hand. Right. But we've got to allow him to guide us. As well, he says here, and that's what David, I believe, the psalmist is talking about. Not only am I holding it, but you guide me. I'm allowing you. Right. But we have to want it. We have yeah. to stick our hand out asking him to guide us. Um, I think this is more of a, of a person that has the, the ability to make decisions on their own. And they could choose whether they're going to extend their hand out to ask for help or not. Um, it's yeah, not think, necessarily God just going to grab our hands and just force us to go. Yeah. we got to extend. I'm sorry. When ahead. you're depressed you also lose that focus and you, so that's the point where you need it's a catch-22 it's when you need it the most you don't have it right and so you got to really kind of take stock of what's going on and, and get past that you do and that's hard it, a lot of this stuff is easier said than done and I don't want to pretend like for two seconds it's just hey just go do it it's not that but if you realize that in your prayer and as you're reading, you're realizing you're that person that's holding that right hand in tight and you're not extending it to God. Maybe through that prayer and that study, you can realize that you've been focusing on your will and not on God's will because we must rely on Him for the power to accomplish our goals to get out of that depression. This means that our goals need to align with what? His will, right? Someone has their hand up? Go ahead. Um, I think like at times like these as well, if you can't outwardly see it like from your own perspective, I think that's when we should step in and like maybe have a Bible study with them and kind of alter ourselves up to it and see if that opens them to it. Absolutely. That way we can cross our own boundaries and like help them be better. We're better together. And when we see this happening in someone else's life, should we step in and, and try to help them? Absolutely. So this is going to be kind of as a side note, we're going to go down a little bit of a different path here, but still it pertains to this and the will. Uh, sometimes the smallest changes can be the most helpful in freeing up our paralysis of our will and allow us to seek His will more. Okay? So, I have a bullet point, a couple bullet points here. Keep your living environment godly. Right? If our living environment is godly, we're more likely to see His will. We're more likely to live in an unstressful situation, a more bright and cheerful and uncluttered situation. 
that will allow us to be able to act upon this and see his will. Watch less television. Fill your time with uplifting and inspirational scriptures. So instead of spending all your time watching YouTube videos or, or just in the, the TV, um, focus on things that are going to build you up spiritually. And through that, when we dig into his word, do we see his will? Yes. Absolutely. They go hand in hand. Uh, set small attainable goals every day. For example, take a daily walk and use that time for prayer. We already discussed that. So now taking a walk helps us in two areas, right? So everyone needs to start taking walks, right? <laughs> um, write thank you and encouragement notes to other people. Become an encourager. A lot of times when we take the focus off of ourselves and start helping other people, that will help us feel better. Because we're doing God's will, number one, and also we take that, that focus off of ourselves and we can start getting in a groove of helping other people. I know always if I go visit someone at the hospital or what have you, I've talked to other people that say this, they always feel better when they leave if they're visiting a brother or sister in the hospital or they go help someone. It helps you just as much as the person that you're helping when you're doing God's will. And this too will help you uh, be more aligned with God's will. And just lastly, look for ways to help people every day. So make a point every day. I'm going to find a way to help somebody no matter what it is. It might be a brother and sister in Christ. It might just be someone at work. But when you take the focus off yourself and align with God's will of helping other people, then, just like our minds, we must make our perspective God's perspective, and that is be a servant, right? So, let me see here. All right, so someone read John 14.1 for me. John 14.1. But when you read it, do me a favor, replace the word uh, heart with soul. Let not your soul be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. So, belief takes action. For all this that we're going through, belief takes action. So if we want our will to align with God, we must forego our will, reach out our hand to God, and get the help that we need. Okay? Let's jump into emotions. Alright, what are emotions? I thought that was a just an easy question, but I'm like, what is it? Feelings, right? That's the, that's just the most Barney Rubble, as we say, way to break it down. It's a natural, instinctive state of mind derived from one circumstances, mood, or relationship with others. Okay. So when we're dealing with guarding our emotions or dealing with our emotions, often people are depressed because they 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 hold in their emotions. They don't express their emotions. They they don't find a, a a healthy way to release their emotions, their anger, their frustration, and their stress. And and a common cause of this is, is maybe from a loss or a past hurt that they've had in their, their life. There can be a lot of things that cause this, but the thing is, is it's all in how we deal with our emotions whenever they arise. And, it, and as we talk with mass depression, when we hold this in, what to do? It becomes a what? Cancer. It's poison to you, right? What's the, what's the saying I, I, I said last week? Acid eat at the vial in which it's in first. And if you're just holding in your emotions, what's that? Uh, when you hold in that, uh, that emotion, it just eats at you, right? And you might be frustrated with somebody, and they don't know. They're just going on whistling, just happy as can be. And here you are, you're upset that something that they do that they might not have intended to do to you, and you're just angry. And you're the only one that's suffering from it. When you could have said, hey, it really frustrated me when you did this. And they might just, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to do that. This is why I did it. And you go, oh, okay. But then for the last week, you've just been boiling because you couldn't put on your big boy pants and express your emotions. And sometimes we just got to get past ourselves and go, hey, I need to verbalize this. But we need to make sure that we don't do it in a way in which it's unhealthy. We don't want to, like, explode on people. We want to do it healthily. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I was going to say, like, it when you do hold it in for a long time, then usually it comes out. Absolutely. And then it comes out like in a horrible situation. You lose a friend or you lose... It does. it does. And we're actually going to get into that. that. That's spot on. We're going to go through the don'ts and the do's of emotions. So that way we can see how to deal with it. Go ahead. 
Um, I was going to say sometimes um, another key concept about us being annoyed or frustrated with somebody is the fact that we get upset with them for something very small and I think another thing we can do is be able to let go of it. Mm -hmm. Like let's say someone maybe chews with their mouth open and you somehow ride on that for three days. At that point you need to like let it go. And that's like only an example. Okay. But like it's like those kinds of things that sometimes it's on us to let it go because we can't we can't get mad or upset at every small thing that someone right. does. We need to be able to control ourselves a little bit and just release it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go ahead and then we're going to move on. Going off of what Sam said, I think it also is important that um, we forgive that person even if they don't ask for it because that's going to help us move on if we forgive them for it. We, here's the deal. It's one of those things that life's too short, right? Yeah. What Harboring stuff, it's not worth it. So here's some don'ts. Don't deny your feelings. You got to acknowledge it. Don't withdraw. Don't become an introvert. Don't draw in uh, because that can lead to extreme loneliness, single sided understanding, uh, compounded anger, distorted thinking. We're better together. Express your feelings to somebody else or talk to whoever upset you. Don't resort to bullying. A lot of people have issues in their lives. Because they have issues in their lives, they end up projecting that on other people, and that turns into bullying. Um, don't self-harm. A lot of times when people um, have emotion that's pent up inside and they don't let it go, they, they go into a self-harm mode, and it could be from anywhere from doing things that are dangerous, or can get into things like, the next one is substance abuse, you know, alcohol or drugs or things that numb the pain or the feeling. The do things are, and this is just one way in which you can try to, to handle your emotion, and this is good, I want you to write this down. It's called PATH. It's an acronym. P-A-T-H. Pause, acknowledge, think, and then help. Okay? First, have you ever heard anyone say, stop, count to ten? Alright, pause. When you pause, that means that you take a moment and you don't just let your instinctive reactions Take, take over you, right? You just pause for a moment, and it might be counting to 10, it might be counting to 100, it might be, I need a moment, <laughs> I'm going to walk away, and we'll, we'll, we'll put a pin in this, we'll come back to it. There might be different timelines on this one, because you might need to just really think about it. The next one is actual acknowledgement. Acknowledge the emotion that you're having, and dig deep in inside yourself, and figure out why you're having that emotion. Are you really upset that they did something to you right at that moment? Or is there some deep-seated thing going on in your life that's just causing you to be reactionary to people? Because they bumped into you and you just get angry and you dump your acid on them. Did that do anybody any good? Because you're so angry? No. So after you stop and pause, you acknowledge what you're feeling and just figure out what it is. And that's the think portion. Think about it. Think really deep and think about how you as a Christian can make your situation better and not worse in that moment. And then after you've finished thinking about it, get the help. Help is taking action for yourself based upon what you came up in the think step process. And this could be Praying, praying about your heartache, your hurt, your anxiety, your anger, your fear, your frustration. Seek God's will. Um, it could also be going and talking to a brother and just sitting down and expressing what happened to the person that did it to you in a nice, calm manner now that you've had time to think about it and lay out your emotion and why you were frustrated. So in that way, you can deal with it. But the thing with it is, is whenever you actually take a moment and stop, you acknowledge the true core of it, you think about how a Christian will handle it, and then you get the help that you need, whether it's external or internal, you'll be able to deal with and work through your emotions a lot better, and you won't have the stress built up inside. Okay, we'll probably wrap up with this one because uh, the bell's probably going to ring here soon. Uh, there's an emotions handout. So, yes ma'am? On that, on the opposite side of that. So, yes. Yeah, we need to. But if you're the one that they come to, do not, under any circumstances, minimize how they feel. Right. First thing a lot of people, oh, you, don't, you shouldn't feel like that. They have every 
right to feel the way they're feeling. Right. And you need to let them feel that way and say, it's okay to feel like that. What do we need to do? And that actually is going to be our final class. There's going to be a handout on do's and don'ts of dealing with someone who has depression. Don't say you understand if you haven't been there. There's different things that you just do and don't. Okay, so before y'all leave, uh, perfect timing because the Holy Spirit, we can actually just touch on that one real quick before we dive into the other stuff for on Wednesday. But this right here is emotions. And I want y'all to take this as a tool. If you are struggling with depression or stress or someone else is dealing with it, use this as a tool as the other one that I handed out. So what it talks about is um, mood boosters, ways to improve your mood. Uh, make sure that you uh, address your basic needs, process your feelings, problem solving, um, going to God, hobbies and stress relievers, and re relaxation exercises, asking for help. If you're struggling with it or you know someone who is, go over this. Just read it. There might be something in there that just really resonates with you that might help you work through the process of dealing with your stress. Because everybody's stress or depression is just a little bit different than somebody else's. And if we figure out ways to improve our mood or address our basic needs or process our feelings, it's just like eating an elephant. We do it one bite at a time, right? Okay? All right. Love you guys. Thank you so much for your input.